maybe a good place to start would be talking to us about how you got started with Cassie's Cure. Okay, so how did I get started with Cassie's Cure? So I got started with Cassie's Cure when um, a very unfortunate situation. My I was an undergrad and my first love, my ex-boyfriend, broke up with me and he cheated on me. And I was so heartbroken and all of my friends were like, oh, it's first love's curse. And I ended up being like, no, something's a little, it's, it's a little deeper than this, y'all. And they're like, you'll be okay. And I just wasn't feeling okay. Mm. And we had a um, counseling and psychological services on campus called the CAPS. And I went in and I was like, I'm gonna go see a therapist. And I went and I was like, my boyfriend broke up with me and he cheated on me. And I feel horrible and I can't stop thinking about it. And I got to work with her and really unpack a lot of emotional baggage. And then some of the assignments that she tasked me with was like, you know, writing out my feelings, like really figuring out what self-care looks like for me. Mm. And I created like a private little wellness blog and I just would just write out how I felt. And it felt really good to write how I was feeling. And then about a year later, I decided to make that blog public. It was like a scary, mm. vulnerable, courageous kind of type of thing. <laughs> and I was like, dang, everyone's gonna know my business. Cause it was just like, you if you knew me, you knew what I was talking about in that blog. And um, ironically enough, people were like, oh my gosh, I've felt this way in my friendships or, oh my gosh, I felt this way when I got my heart broken. Oh my gosh, I've, I've had these kind of family concerns as well. And like the amount of people who were just like, thank you for sharing this. And I am super glad that you shared how you worked through that because I never thought of that. I was like, oh wow, I was hiding these feelings and these emotions because I was like afraid of being judged when like so many people are like, me too and mm -hmm. normalizing and comforting and like like commending and kind of like saying like thank you for sharing and after i made the blog public i was like you know what i still had some emotions left within me and i like writing down my feelings so i created a poetry book and i got a little bit deeper in my poetry book and a lot of people are like oh my gosh this specific poem this one about like daddy issues this one about insecurities i resonate so well and um, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm just putting out stuff for me. And I always tell people like Cassie's Cure is a play on words because it's literally like my cure, yeah. essentially, <laughs> for just getting well and just really learning to love myself better. And then obviously it's what I share with other people to how to do it as well. And then obviously the pandemic came, which is so funny because my friends are like, you should really start a business like you should host workshops you should have retreats like you're the one friend who gets everyone together you're the one friend who knows how to organize it like you should do it and i was like all right i'm gonna do it at the top of 2020 and then the pandemic came and i was like oh how am i gonna what retreat where <laughs> um but i was able to still really um i hired my first business coach to kind of teach me the ropes of really how i wanted to present my business and everything and that's when i got into finally being able to host wellness retreats self-care events and a lot of people were like, do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching? And I was like, not yet. Because <laughs> I was like, what am I going to tell you? I'm not a therapist. That's the way I was thinking about it. But then I started doing coaching and thinking about the things that I could teach people that didn't require therapy. But mm. shortly after, a lot of my clients were like, you feel like a therapist. And I was like, I don't want the government coming after me. So <laughs> I decided to enroll back in school to become a therapist. And I'll graduate in May 2025. Wow. What? Nice. <laughs> So now I'm like, all right, let me go ahead and not that component so I can help in that way. But yeah. it was really like a self love and self healing process uh, that I felt like my therapist assisted me with and me just taking, um, the, had, gaining the courage to act on my creative ideas and my creative forms of expression. And self care has always been an interesting topic to me, even since I was little, like my family will always be like, you're so empathetic for every single little thing. <laughs> And so um, I've always looked at empathy as one of my biggest strengths and really knowing how to like be there and sit and stuff with people, but not take on their problems at the same time. Mm -hmm. like, let me sit in this with you and fill this with you, but also I don't have to take it home as if it's my own, my own baggage. And I think that's allowed me to hold some really good space for people. So just want to continue doing that. <laughs>